Hey guys, Jim here and welcome to Budget RC. In this video we're going to show you how to change the servo on the Red Cat Gen 7. If you've been following along, you know that my last video was the steering upgrade video. And we made a lot of great improvements on the steering for very little cost. One area that was still left to upgrade was the servo itself. Now to be perfectly honest, I really consider this to be optional. I've had nothing but great luck with the factory servo. I think it's powerful enough. It's a little slow, but it does the job. That said, I know a lot of people have had problems with that servo and haven't had the greatest durability from it. So it's a good idea to have an upgrade in mind so that if you do have any problems, you can have a backup plan. For me, that was the Turnigy 959 V2 servo. It's a $33 servo, all metal gears, and I'm really impressed with the construction. So we've got it in already as you can see, but in the video I take you through step by step on how to do it. One note about the video is that I actually was at my in-laws for Thanksgiving holiday, so I don't have my usual setup. It doesn't look as good, but I think it's good enough for you to still get an idea of how to change the servo. So follow along and at the end we'll do our wrap up. I showed the servo to you guys in a previous video, but this is the 959 V2 from Hobby King. It's a $33 servo. I took it apart and it actually looks really nice inside, so I have high hopes that it's going to be a really good servo for the money. The plan here is to start off trying it plugged in directly to the receiver instead of using the BEC. I want to see if the 2 amp output from the speed control is adequate or if we're going to run into some brownouts. So we're going to go ahead and put this in and see how it works tied directly to the speed control. So first I'm going to do the wiring. Once the wiring is disconnected, then we'll disconnect the servo. Okay guys, so now we have the wiring completely disconnected. So once we do that, it's just a matter of disconnecting the servo horn and then taking these off. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll be right back. All right, so I've got the servo out, and putting it next to the new one, you can see that it's basically the same size, which is great. We won't run into any kind of fitment or interference issues. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, mount this back in, and then I'll show you guys how we run the wiring and finish it all up. Okay, so now we have the servo mounted, and the next step is to run the wiring and then once we run the wiring we can just use our wire ties to make sure it's out of the way of any moving parts okay guys so the servos mounted it's all wired in the next thing we want to do is turn the receiver on so that the servo will center right now I just have this sitting here it can come right off and if you remember from the last video because of the throw on the steering we've actually got a little bit longer arm here and we have the servo off center so we're going to want to mount it the same way but we want to have the servo on first so that it'll center. So if we turn our receiver on, or our controller on, now turn our receiver on, now the servo should be centered. So now we have everything where we want it. Lay it flat so our steering is straight. Connect that. Once that's connected, we can shut this off so that you can actually see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is drive the screw right in. Now we should use some Loctite, but again, because I'm not at home, I don't have any here. I didn't throw it into my kit. So we're just going to have to keep an eye on this over the weekend. Go ahead and tighten that down. Okay. And now we want to also tighten the servo horn, which should also help keep it in place even if that screw does loosen up. Alright, so that's good and tight. So now we should be able to turn this on, and the only thing really left to do now is to set our endpoints and just make sure that everything works like it should. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on. Okay, turn this on. And now we're going to cycle our steering. And it looks like our endpoints are exactly where we want them. And it seems like it's centered pretty well. Not the fastest servo, but it doesn't seem too bad. Let's put some weight on this. The servo seems like it's got a lot of strength. So the only thing left to do now is to try it out on the trails. Okay guys, so now we have the new servo installed. You got to see the process. I've had some time to drive it, and overall I have no complaints. I think for the money this is a good servo so far. It's not really much faster than the stock servo, though it might be a little bit faster. It does have about twice as much torque, but so far in my normal driving, I haven't really been able to take advantage of that. I never felt like the stock servo lacked torque. 
at least for the type of driving I do. This servo has about double the torque. It should really be a nice servo. Now one thing you notice is that we did not install a BEC. I'm running this servo directly off of the stock Redcat speed control. And in doing so, I haven't had any brownouts, and I'm pretty happy with how it's working so far. That said, in the future, I may try to experiment with some low-cost BECs, not only to see how those perform, but to see how the servo can do with higher voltage. When I do that, I'll come back and I'll add a link to this video. But in the meantime, I'm just going to go ahead and use the vehicle. I'm quite happy with how it works. So, now on to our totals. From our previous video, we had a total investment, including the cost of the vehicle, of $245. This servo cost $33, which brings our new total to $278. So we're still just a couple of bucks cheaper than the Gen 7 Pro, and I think we have a heck of a lot more capability. So stay tuned, guys. I've got some more videos coming up that I think you're going to enjoy. We're almost done with this series, so make sure you stick around. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe so that you can continue to get updates on this upgrade. Thanks, guys.